There has been a lot of what ifs in NASCAR. For example, what if Dale Jr. signed with Joe Gibbs? What if Kyle Busch stayed at Hendrick? What if Carl Edwards was still racing? And many more. However, one of the biggest underrated what ifs have come from the mid to late 1990s with a man from Coopersville, Michigan named Tim Steele. Tim was an up and coming star from the ARCA Racing Series, scoring three championships in 93, 96, and 97. However, a crash at Atlanta later that year would change his life forever. In episode 4 of Inside the Line Stock Car Stories, we take a look at Tim Steele, tough as steel. Born in Coopersville, Michigan in 1968, Tim is the son of Harold and Marcia Steele. Tim was introduced into motorsports at a very early age by his grandfather and father by working on race cars, competing with go-karts, mini champs, and motorcycles. If there was ever a natural born racer, it may be said that Tim Steele fits into that category. Tim entered the 0 to 14 age bracket for motorcycle ice racing at the age of 5. In 1981, at the age of 13, Tim finished second in the AMA 125cc class Michigan State Motocross Championships. In 1984, at age 16, Tim participated in international jet ski racing events. Also that same year, he won the NAMRA Champ Cars Division Championship and was named as Rookie of the Year. Tim soon found that he was most comfortable behind the wheel of a stock car. He began racing a late model and recalls his most memorable win came in 1989 at his home track, Berlin Raceway. To begin broadening his participation to include other racing series, and soon found success with victories in ASA at Salem in 1990 and in the NASCAR All-Pro Series at Winchester in 1992. With his father Harold as a car owner and sponsor, the familiar red HNS die in engineering number 16 car from that day forward has compiled an impressive list of accomplishments, many of which stand unparalleled to this day. Nineteen ninety three would also see Tim get a start in the Arca Racing Series at Texas World Speedway. Driving for his father in the red HS Diane Engineering car with three manufacturers between nineteen ninety three and nineteen ninety seven for Ford, Oldsmobile, and Chevrolet. In his rookie season in 1993, Steele exploded onto the scene, scoring three wins at Talladega, Pocono, and Winchester, and locking up the 1993 ARCA Championship. He also competed in two Bush Grand National races at Michigan and Richmond for Davey Allison's team. Both races ended, though, with DNFs. The following year, he only competed in six races, but still managing to win again at Pocono. That same year in 94, Steele competed in five Winston Cup races in a car owned by Bobby Allison, only managing a best finish of 33rd at Pocono. He attempted to qualify for the inaugural Brickyard 400, but failed to do so. In the Bush Grand National Series, Tim competed in one race at Michigan for his father's team, and it once again ended with another DNF. In 1995, Steele won three more races, but due to an off-track knee injury, it prevented him from running the full season. In 1996, he scored his second ARCA championship by winning an astonishing 11 of the 25 races and scoring in the top 5 in 17 races, including 22 top 10 finishes. 1997 was just as impressive when he won his third championship scoring 12 more wins, 15 top 5s, and 17 more top 10s. However, he had to withdraw from the final race Atlanta due to a crash that would eventually change his life forever. With all of his success in ARCA, Tim and his father Harold were ready to move up to the Cup Series. They had agreed to a deal with Bud Moore, a D-Day war hero who had been in NASCAR since the early 1960s. During that time, Moore had won 63 races and two championships as a team owner, but could not find enough money to run the full 1997 season. The Steels were coming to save Bud Moore's team with an NFL superstar who wanted to be part of NASCAR, Green Bay Packers quarterback Brett Favre, who also brought in major sponsors like Nike and Sony. With everything close to being official, Steele began testing for more in early November. They planned to enter the Cup season finale at Atlanta on November 16th and announced their future plans that weekend. 11 days before the race, on Wednesday, November 5th, six days before he was supposed to sign his Winston Cup contract, Steele participated in the second day of a two-day Winston Cup test at the newly reconfigured Atlanta Motor Speedway. 
Driving a four Thunderbird with Daytona USA decals on the sides, Steele's fastest lap was 191.834 miles per hour. For comparison purposes, that speed is nearly 7 miles an hour faster than Kyle Busch's 2018 Cup Bull speed at the same track. Try to really set a record. Tom mentioned about, so let's put a rubber in that right rear spring. I said, no, that's going to be too much. You can't do that. The car's going to be too loose. Him said, oh, no, it won't be too loose. And uh, we argued around about, about 30, 45 minutes. And finally, I said, OK, put a hyper rubber in. A little bit bigger adjustment for that style of car. We're in our car. I think that would have probably worked. If I could have just a half a second back in my life, that don't sound like much when you're going 200 miles an hour, half seconds, a lifetime. At nearly 200 miles an hour, Steele went into turn three and the back end of his car broke free. Steele's Thunderbird spun and hit the concrete wall with the driver's side, his helmet impacting the concrete. Steele was unconscious when safety crews reached his car. The roof was cut off and he was taken to Southern Regional Medical Center in Jonesboro, Georgia. Steele underwent a CAT scan which proved negative for any detectable problems and received treatment for a sprained left ankle. I really don't know what happened, Steele said after leaving the hospital later that day. I'm not sure I want to know, but I'm okay. My ankle's a little sore, but I'm fine. It turned out that Tim suffered a severe concussion in that wreck, and regardless of whether the effects started later or if he was just denying what had happened, Steele did not get the proper recovery. Despite the Wednesday crash and head injury, Tim was entered in a Winston West race at Las Vegas just three days later. So like any tough race car driver, he left the hospital and boarded a plane for the West Coast. Steele arrived at Las Vegas and strapped into his car for the first practice. It is unclear how much his head was affecting him, but other undiagnosed injuries forced Steele to withdraw from the race. We made two practice runs, Steele said. When I bulked up into the driver's seat, I knew I was hurt worse than I thought. I've been sore before, but never like that. Not only was my ankle bothering me, but my chest was so tight that it was difficult to breathe right. Steele flew back to Michigan and entered the hospital. According to him, he was diagnosed with four broken ribs and fractures to his ankle. As it turned out, they deduced that the ankle is more or less crushed, Steele said, but the biggest problem is the four broken ribs. One of them was very close to puncturing a lung. The doctor said if I were to take another hard lick, I could be in big time trouble. They would not clear me to race after analyzing the situation. Is building, but I said knew there was no carpeting and the grass was brown. I thought I was having a bad dream. Went back to bed and couldn't fall asleep. And what in the hell is going on? Come to find out, no, it's April 19th of 98. April 19th, 1998. That date was six months after his accident at Atlanta. He was fully conscious, but has no memory of the six months after his crash. He doesn't even remember accepting his third ARCA championship. He was basically in a walking coma. On January 31st, 1998, Bud Moore made the announcement that Steele was still recovering from his concussion sustained at Atlanta. Not only would the team not enter the Daytona 500, it would be at least July before Steele would be well enough to come back. In May of 98, reports weren't looking so good for Steele. His post-concussion injuries were not getting much better. At the same time, it was announced that Blaze Alexander would run a limited schedule for Bud Moore until Steele recovered. It was mentioned that perhaps Alexander and Steele would be part of a two-car team for Moore in 1999. However, plans for it fell through and Alexander would never drive for Moore. Instead, Ted Musgrave and Lloyd Allen attempted a few races over the summer. Looking back in 98 when I was at the Mayo Clinic, I now know that the doctors were right when they told me I should probably find a different career. I just wasn't willing to accept that. It was like admitting defeat. Racing was my life. It is how I earn my living. I don't know anything else. So it was so hard to walk away from my life. I had worked so hard to get where I had gotten, I just couldn't give up on it now. Going against doctor's orders, Steele returned to the car. On June 20th, 1998, eight months after his crash, Steele made a miraculous comeback at the Pocono Raceway. Tim started second and led 75 laps and won his first race back. Running in six ARCA races throughout 1998, Tim won five poles and four more races that same year. Throughout all this, however, he was secretly suffering from double vision. 
Talladega, I ended up having to keep my right eye closed a lot because I'm bouncing around and seeing more than double, probably seeing three or four of everything. The whole side of my face was about numb after that race. After that, I started hiding pieces of tape up underneath the dash to where if I uh, needed it, I'd grab and put one over my eye, and then when I'd pit, I'd always take it off so nobody'd see it. Steele's chances to drive in the Cup Series was gone. In 1999, Steele competed in 13 Craftsman Truck Series races in a truck once again owned by his father. He accumulated only one top 10 finish and led 45 laps. He averaged a 19th place finish and finished 25th overall in the standings. Over the next two years, Tim won an additional seven races in the ARCA division. However, around 1998, Tim was suffering from double vision and crippling headaches. To fight his headaches, Tim's doctor prescribed him Vicodin. However, Tim was worried about its addictive potential, so his doctor decided to prescribe him Oxycontin. Now in 2019, Oxycontin is known as one of the most addictive legal drugs in the market. However, in 1998, its dangers were not fully known. As a result, Steel became addicted to Oxycontin. In a 2012 short story, Tough Like Steel, it talked about how the drugs affected Tim as a person. I mean, the medication was so, was so strong sometimes when he would talk to him. It didn't seem like you were talking straight to him. It just kind of made things kind of cloudy. It changed his personality. It changed who he was. And I could see the dependency. Something's not right. When he got into the drug use, he kind of fell off the deep end on being a dad. He mentioned in the 2012 interview that it was a death cycle, sort of with him taking the drug to treat headaches, but the side effects of the drug was giving him headaches. Some of the most common side effects of Oxycontin included stomach pain, drowsiness, flushing, dry mouth, and headaches. Finally, in September 2003, Steele finally sought to get help for his addiction. Probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life was to come clean and then publicly admit that I have a drug problem. I'm doing that now and we're hoping that me going public with it all might help others out there. During rehab, he went through a rapid detox where he was put to sleep for the first 10 hours of withdrawal. In the years that followed, Tim entered rehab several more times to treat his addiction to other narcotics he replaced the painkillers with. By the mid-2000s, Tim was sober. However, his racing career was coming to an end. His final win in ARCA came in 2001 at Berlin Raceway. He would only compete in 15 more races from 2002 to 2006, scoring only three top fives in those final 15 races. In 2007, after crashing his late model in a test at Toledo Speedway, he finally announced his retirement from driving. While Steele's career potential was cut prematurely, his stats are nothing short but just sheer domination. Between 1993 and 2006, Steele had attempted 146 races in ARCA, winning 41, which equates to victories in 28% of all the races he's entered in. Steele's 24 victories is ARCA's all-time Super Speedway winner, including 9 at Pocono Raceway. He scored 86 top 5 finishes, 101 top 10s, and led 5,423 laps. That means that Steele led laps in 64% of every race he's entered in. He also won 31 career pole awards, and he was the first ARCA driver to make over $1 million in his career. While Tim has since stopped racing, his daughter Kelsey has continued on the Steel legacy. In 2009, she became the first woman at Berlin Raceway to win, placing first in the Berlin Raceway Young Guns feature. And in 2011, she actually beat future NASCAR Cup Series driver Chase Elliott after overcoming a crash to beat Chase by 4.4 seconds. After the race, she received a handshake from him and later on went to say in an M Live Michigan paper, he's a hell of a race car driver, so I'm honored to beat him. However, three days later, she was stripped of her win because she was found to have her tires altered. In a 2012 feature regarding Tim Steele and his career, it was known that Kelsey has since stopped racing in order to focus on school but Tim is now working with his niece who wants to have a career in racing. As of November 5th, 2018, Steele is still involved in the company with HS Dye and Engineering and runs a River Hills Lodge Fiesen hunting camp in Platt, South Dakota. His story is mixed with sadness and resilience. Tim's career could have been much different had he not crashed in Atlanta. The plans to run in the Cup Series with Brett Favre and Nike went away in an instant, but at the same time, Tim is still alive. And his experience with head injuries is something that racers likely won't have to repeat again but better awareness and better treatment options mean that Tim's story is one to learn from. 
a story that can help others. Well, this concludes this episode of Inside the Lines Stock Car Stories. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content. But until next time, my name is Jet from NASCAR on MDK. Thanks for watching. Thank you.